The fundamental force is, of course, the electrostatic force. We have two positive particles repelling each other. The rate of change of momentum is delta P over delta T, and that is equal to the force. And since force is a vector and momentum is a vector, if we know the direction of the force, we also know the direction of the rate of change of momentum. So the direction of the force between the gold nucleus and X is radially outwards from X like this. Just out of interest, if we had a point Y here, then you could see that the force is going to be in a slightly different direction and will be radially outwards again from the gold nucleus through the alpha particle outwards. We have to suggest a particle that will scatter through 90 degrees downwards. Well, clearly, it's not going to be one, two, or three because they're going upwards. Particle four will just bounce straight back because it's in line with the center of the gold nucleus. Five, well, five's possible because it's quite close and it's going to be forced downwards. Six, well, you could argue six as well, just about. Seven, eight, and nine are also going to deflect downwards, but nothing like enough given that one hardly curves upwards very much at all. So the answer really, I would say, is five or possibly six. In 5.4, we're given the distance of closest approach for an alpha particle as 5.5 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. At this distance, the alpha particle is not moving and will therefore have a kinetic energy of zero. When the alpha particle was furthest away, it was of course traveling quite fast, so it had quite a considerable kinetic energy. So the question is, where has this kinetic energy gone? And of course, it's gone into electric potential energy. Therefore, we have an energy change here, and we can say that the kinetic energy at some distance is equal to the potential energy, or the electrical potential energy, perhaps I should say, at this stopping distance. And therefore, we can write down that half mv squared equals k q1 q2 over r. Rearranging these formulas, we get that v squared equals 2k q1 q2 all over mr. Remember, of course, that k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now it's just a question of substituting in the values. So v squared is equal to 2 times 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's the charge on the alpha particle times the charge on the gold nucleus, which is 79 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Then underneath we have to do divide by 4 times pi times epsilon 0, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, times the mass of an alpha particle, which is given to us as 6.8 times 10 to the minus 27, times this distance of closest approach, which is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 14. Remember, that jolly lot gives us v squared, so we need to take the square root of all of that. Now, I always have to do these calculations several times because I always get a different answer the second time I do it. However, after three times, normally it's settling down to a consistent answer, which for me comes out as 1.4 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. And of course, it's not just for me. That's the answer on the mark scheme. In part 5.5, we are asked to calculate the nuclear radius of silver AG. And we recall the formula that R equals R0 A to the third, where R0 is a constant and A is the nucleon number. Because R0 is a constant, we can say that R1 over A1 to the third equals R2 over A2 to the third. So R1 is going to be the details for gold, AU, and R2 will be the details for silver, AG. Now, that means we're after R2, the radius of silver. So let's set R2 equal to R1, A2 to the third, divided by A1 to the third. Now, if you bung in the numbers to that, 6.98 times 10 to the minus 15 times 107 cube rooted, all divided by 197 cube root, you get the answer, which is, of course, 5.7 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Last part then, 
all nuclei have approximately the same density. What does this tell us about the nucleons in the nucleus? Well, it tells you several things. Both, firstly, the proton and the neutron both have about the same size or the mass. But more interestingly, it tells us that you can't really, well, at least not easily, compress these nucleons as the nucleus gets bigger. It's like you just keep adding them on and so the size goes up in proportion to the number and there's no difference between the nucleons in, say, a helium atom as compared to, say, a plutonium atom. There's just more of them. Now, you might think that's particularly obvious, but it could be that as you start building up to, say, two to 300 nucleons, the fact that there's so many of them in there might mean that they get a little bit squashed under their own attractive forces, but it seems that they don't. And that, I believe, is the end of the question.